I remember way back in November of 2014 when Alfonso and I were surfing the internet looking at VeggieTales videos, and all of a sudden we came across an episode of VeggieTales in the house, and we saw the new designs and our reactions were like this. Followed by a bunch of angry ranting. But we decided to move past that and give it a chance, but after several bad songs, bad jokes, and several Ikebezer appearances later, we couldn't take it anymore. We knew VeggieTales had changed and that this was going to be the new norm. So we decided, just for fun, to spitball around some ideas and make our own little script just to pacify us. Originally, we started off with this concept about Mr. Nezer driving around in this van abducting people, and for some reason, we thought it was a good idea, and we worked in a lesson about there being fads, but we found it too hard to work with, and, well, kind of a bad idea. So we moved on, and we moved on to a, something we're very interested in, is bad cinema, like Tommy Wiseau, uh, Derek Savage, and especially Ed Wood. We love those movies, especially the Johnny Depp movie, Ed Wood, so what better step to take? and make an Ed Wood VeggieTales. Of course, having to clean up a lot of stuff was a little bit of a challenge, but we were able to do it and move past it, and Eddie Woodley, the artist who never gave up, was made. So, way back when, right after we'd gotten off the whole Mr. Nezzer's van thing, when we moved on to Eddie Woodley, when I first read the script, I didn't actually know what the script was of until I read it that first time. And once I read it, it came to me right up, right up the, off the bat when I got that script. And when, when reading through it, I'm just like, this is good. We've got something good here. We are pretty close to what Bill and Mike had. Way closer than the current show would ever get. So, we had that. It was pacifying us for the time being. Then as we went on, we realized that people wanted to see it. So we made that episode and recorded ourselves reading the episode and uploaded it. And then when the people wanted to see more, we made a few more before we eventually decided it was going to be a thing. And then it be it was a thing, and it will continue to be a thing. Writing for Eddie Woodley was easy at first. Like, everything just started flowing really naturally, like all the jokes, the natural progression of the story, and of course the lesson. But then I realized, I can't write an ending! I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing! So, I was thinking maybe I could hire some Latvians to help me out and write this, but I, I'm kinda of short on cash, and this is just a fan thing. So. I was eventually able to do it. Very difficult, might I add. But overall, the writing process just kind of flew naturally, not just because I was basing it off of a movie and already my pre-existing knowledge of the Ed Wood person himself, but because, well, Ed Wood is just a funny thing in general. You could just easily fit it into VeggieTales, like, oh, here's the squid scene, here's the time when Tor Johnson is climbing out of the grave, you know, there's all that stuff. You can just throw that into VeggieTales and it would automatically fit. It works with the VeggieTales frame itself, and I'm actually kind of surprised they haven't done anything to, like that ever before. And of course we had to skip over the silly song because at the time we didn't know we were going to be doing more of these and we didn't even have an idea for a silly song, but luckily in the character commentary we were able to come up with something. So the casting for Eddie Woodley was actually not that difficult. A lot of the characters were pretty obvious choices. I mean, right off the bat, Edward Larry. Like, A, Larry's very common main character, and B, that's a perfect role for him. So, it did not take long to decide who our Ed Wood was, or Eddie Woodley. And of course, Ed Wood had a girlfriend, or two. <laughs> so, it's like, okay, Larry, girlfriend, Petunia. That fit pretty easily. Although, then again, we had to work around, of course. Girlfriend, wife, living with him. But then there's other choices like Padre. Padre, Bella Lugosi, Bella Lugostine, <laughs> who fit very well again, just old, wise, but kind of eccentric as well. And Mr. Nezer. Okay, with Mr. Nezer, um, we made a pact very early on to, out of respect for what happened to him, we decided we'd keep him in every episode as much as we possibly could without it seeming, like, shoehorned. So, Mr. Nezer, we found ways to get him everywhere, which is definitely something that needs to be done considering now he's out of the picture in the actual show. So then, having him be the director that takes over and ruins it fit, because that part was a little bent from the original Edward story, because that involved a lot of Catholic, church, baptism, 
stuff, which would have been a little hard to work around, so having it be a movie director and having it be Mr. Nezer with his Yes Man Mr. Lund fit very easily, again with Mr. Lund, as a second to Mr. Nezer also worked. Then there were characters like um, Madame Blueberry for um, Balira or Vampira, which was just, um, that worked as well, and um, just another female character that fit that role of being like a big time actor, or just big time anything, because what is Madame Blueberry, <laughs> but big, but if, I, but if I'm speaking about big, Apollo Gord as Thor Jackson, <laughs> that was a pretty easy choice. You got this big wrestler guy, Tor Johnson. You got a big dumb wrestler. Who better than Apollo Gord, who is a big dumb wrestler? <laughs> that wasn't a hard choice either. Another match made in heaven. Very, very easy choice. Then, Archibald. Um, Archibald, with his choice, um, was again very easy as... Just kind of this eccentric, weird guy, with this weird fortune teller guy, although not quite fortune teller, because that's not good for Christian kids. But again, Archibald was just very good at being out there and absurd, but also like so sophisticated that Archibald was again a very big fit. And then Jimmy and Jerry just being supporting characters that were messing everything up. That also worked. And then Jean-Claude and Philippe as just other random people there, again, worked. Once this was released to the public, people loved it. They were commenting how it was just like Veggie Tales and how funny it was and how well done it was. Granted, the video itself was a little rough, but they didn't seem to mind that. So, we decided this was a lot of fun, but it's time to move on. However, I kept thinking back and over and over and over again. So two months later, I decided I'm doing another one of these. Just like one more thing to kick this whole thing off and just kind of lay my thoughts to rest. Once that came out, I decided let's keep doing this because people were loving it. The fandom was openly accepting this as pretty much the new Veggie Tales. And of course, I got more people helping me with art and now upcoming music, things are getting a lot better and moving a lot smoother for VeggieTales Live and Reloaded. So to think it started off with two people on the West Coast who are diehard VeggieTales fans just trying to make themselves happy. And now, we're two guys on the West Coast who are diehard VeggieTales fans trying to make all of you happy.